King Pumpkins, a guitarist, and you're also now a, uh, a co-owner uh, of Scratchy Records? Correct. And, uh, you know, I've seen the, uh, the Pumpkins on, um, on The Simpsons, and the characters are itchy and scratchy in the cartoon. Was that possibly how you came up with the name? No. Well, how, how did you come up with the name, then? I didn't come up with the name. Jeremy did. Jeremy is president of Scratchy. Uh-huh. I'm one of the shareholders and A&R artist uh, relationship people. And as a uh, person doing what you're doing, do you just hate things like this? It's interesting. <laughs> you know, we play the uh, the Chainsaw Kittens a lot on 95X. Yeah, they they're, they're from Norman. In fact, I talked to uh, David and I talked to Trent from the band uh, right before you guys were here. Uh, and he was telling us about one of your early gigs. I think he played together in a theater in Norman. Oh, yeah. He actually uh, promoted that show and he put it together. They, they opened up for us in a movie theater in Norman four or five years ago. It was pretty, uh, pretty crazy, if I can remember. <laughs> now that you're stuck playing all these, uh, these huge places, do you miss playing things like a, a movie theater in Norman, Oklahoma? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, at a certain point when you tour for so long, the repetition sort of wears on you. Well, you know, I thought, uh, I thought that exact same thing. You two had their press conference uh, the other day, and... Uh, you know they release their tour dates, and you've you know done the same thing. I'm sure with the uh, the enormous tour, uh, just doing it. Uh, even if you get a day off or two days off in a row or whatever, you know you're doing it uh, as many times as you do over a year or 18 months or hell well, two years, whatever. How you continue to have the enthusiasm that you had, uh, you know, the first three weeks of the tour. Yeah, I mean it's never quite the same. I mean. The shows themselves generally were pretty good. And, you know, I, I like playing on stage, uh, playing like loud electric guitar, but um, I, it's, it's more of the, the wear of touring, the consecutive nights in a row that kind of kill you. But um, I, I, miss, I miss playing the smaller places just in terms of people having a good show. But in order to play for like, I don't know, probably the amount of fans that we could play for, you know, we would be in one town for a week and the shows would be horrible after a while. Um, can you hang on a second? Somebody at my door. Yeah. Wow. How cool. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting at the door. It's the, the, the EA household. Funky connection there. Yeah. Oh, James has got a funky phone. <laughs> it's not talking very loud either. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue uh, talking to James as soon as he finds out who is ever, uh, you know, at his door or whatever. And don't forget, President's Day today, we're giving away tickets. For their show at the Diamond Ballroom, uh, 27th? Yes. 27th. All day on 95X. It's the Morning X with uh, David Cook, Alan Cross, uh, by the way. Uh, James uh, is the guitarist for the Smashing Pumpkins. He's also the owner, co-owner, uh, of a record label called Scratchy Records, which I believe is also the home of Fountains of Wayne. James, what is your uh, what is your connection there with Adam Schlesinger? Um, he's part owner of uh, Scratchy, too. He's a uh, childhood friends with uh, Jeremy. It's Darcy's brother-in-law, who is the president of Scratchy. He was actually in Scratchy before I was in, even in it. So when he put Fountains of Wayne together with uh, his friend Chris, we licensed it to Atlantic. And uh, he's also, Adam is also in another band called Ivy, who is on Atlantic. Didn't Adam uh, do some recording work with uh, the Pumpkins, I think, on the Airplane Flies High or something? He, I, I... he did something with me. played a uh, piano on a song of mine. Sounds like, uh, you know, are you just working constantly? Pretty much, yeah. Billy's a work workaholic, and we uh, try to keep up with the pace. But um, the tour tour was something we all committed to. We committed to all playing all these places, so it just takes a long time. And when, when we committed to it, we didn't imagine it going quite as far as it did go. It's interesting that uh, the Chainsaw Kittens almost have kind of a power pop sound and, and definitely Fountains of Wayne. And uh, when I think of, of the Pumpkins, there are some songs like that, but some of it is kind of this uh, cyber metal kind of kind of sound. How do you, is this more poppy side a part of you and, and something you'd like uh, other uh, people to be aware of? Well, I mean, I, I like all different kinds of music. And the, the three big bands we have going right now, Fountain, Full Fledge, and Chainsaw Kittens, they're they are definitely in the power pop vein. I mean, it's more coincidental than, like, it's not like our, like, motto that it has to be power pop. They just happen to be the only bands that we signed that have uh, really good songs. So are uh, you getting tons and tons of tapes from uh, interested bands now? Yeah. Anything uh, that uh, you're going to sign or that we uh, also might find on Scratchy Records soon? Um, 
Yeah, actually, next year we're going to put out some dance things, so it'll be kind of a little left of center compared to the power pop stuff. Has uh, being in the Pumpkins helped? I mean, you guys have, uh, originally you were on Caroline, is that correct? Correct. Uh, so you've dealt with a couple of, of record labels. Has uh, being in that situation helped you? Yeah, I mean, when they talk to us, they know that we're not like, we don't have a different agenda like, like some other record companies. Um, you know, record companies are, have a history of being horrible to bands. I think when they talk to us, they know that we're artists too and that we're not going to screw them over. No, that's cool. All right, well, hold on. Uh, we're going we're gonna to speak more with, uh, with James from uh, Smashing Pumpkins, and seeing it's President's Day, uh, we'll also give away tickets for the President of the United States of America within 20 minutes, and it's social distortion on 95. <laughs> of Smashing Pumpkins and uh, keeping us up to date on what you're doing now. At this point, I'm just doing a lot of promotional stuff. It depends on my touring life and how much I can do. You brought up, you brought up the, uh, the thing about the dance. Uh, and that like, next year you guys are going to start working some dance material with you two coming out with disco tech and that uh, the whole trip hop thing or whatever going on there. Uh, do you see dance, you know, making some kind of comeback uh, in the uh, in a different kind of vein than um, you know? Yeah, well, dance music has always been around. I don't. Uh, the things that are coming out next year are there's uh, one guy called Mike Ladd who's from New York and he's more of like hip hop, trippy hip hop. Um, and the other one is Pancho Crystal, who is a singer, and he's a, a, a dancehall reggae singer. Have you heard the new U2? Uh, yeah. What do you think? I think it's a really good song. I found it inter interesting. I read that uh, you're into uh, Graham Parsons. Mm -hmm. He was kind of a forerunner of the country rocker. Now it's almost become alternative country movement. Uh, can you see yourself uh, signing some country bands on Scratchy Records? Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I don't really like most of the country that's around today. It sounds more like just glossy rock and roll with like kind of a twang on top of it. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to the Chainsaw Kittens, you're listening to Fountains of Wayne, what other type of uh, music are, are you listening to and influenced by? Those are pretty much the only new bands I really listen to. When the Pumpkins came to Oklahoma City the first time, uh, I think it was in 91, you opened up for uh, Guns N' Roses. Correct. A lot of people at the show, we saw you uh, here in, uh, when was it, November, December? I can't remember. Uh, but a lot of people were comparing the shows, and evidently at that time the reception wasn't as good, and, and this time it was uh, completely different all around. Well, one, people really never heard of alternative music back then, not, not in the mainstream. Guns N' Roses was the biggest rock band in the world. We were some weird-looking punk goth, I don't know, <laughs> some weird band that no one had ever heard of before. So what were you guys listening to when you were on tour, you know, driving around and uh, when you're uh, sick to death of your own songs, what are you guys listening to? Well, it's not like, I don't know, it's not what people imagine. We really don't get on the bus and just start jamming the music. <laughs> uh, sometimes we listen to a CD, but yeah. we'll watch The X-Files or some movie on mm -hmm. the bus. You're kind of dying on us here. Well, James, uh, is, I think, James, uh, you're in the shower, but... Uh, <laughs> But hey, thank you, James. Yeah, very cool. All right. Smashing pumpkins. And in celebration of that, we'll give away tickets for uh, President C. USA <laughs> <Yeah>. soon <laughs> on 95.